not only should a model be correct, but we think it should indicate to the user at all times whether it is correct. So whether it is a separate sheet with a whole bunch of error checks in, or for example here on our report sheet, we've got some error checks. And at the moment you can see we're checking that the balance sheet's balancing, there's a cash balance, the debt outstanding comes to zero, and even here we've got a, a green cell which say, says we've got sufficient cash resources. So whatever you use to check whether a model is correct should be built into the spreadsheet and shown in some place because when you're under time pressure you'll discover that it's hard to remember all the checks you did manually. Rather build it in and then just have the spreadsheet to check them. So some example error checks we'd build in, if we go here, you'll see we've got a balance sheet here. We always build in a check. Is the balance sheet balancing? You can use colors so you can easily pick up when there's an error and you can summarize it to check are all these okay or not. There's an error there. Even simple checks are useful. So for example, up here, what we've done is we've built an error check just to check this matrix. So over here we've got a number 5008 and that's because it's adding all those up and individually each of these is concerned only about its column. What you'll see is we've created a separate check and what that's doing is adding up the entire matrix and coming to a total. And then a simple check to say are they the same. Because keep in mind that although these things flow, it's very easy to overwrite that one. For example, someone hard codes and puts a number 600, immediately your error check will kick it out and this should appear somewhere on the main error checking page. Improving the integrity as well could take other forms. So for example up here, you'll see by using spark lines, it's a lot easier for the user to see if that makes sense for the US dollar gold price. If we go to the right, you could look at those, but a user would know if that pattern makes sense. For example, here's the exchange rate. You'll see it seems to go, it's then flat, then it goes up. So perhaps this is an old model, and we actually want it to stay at 7 forever, but here it jumps to 7.5. So this is an error checking device where a user can say, ooh, I didn't actually mean to do that. There are also ways to control what gets put into a spreadsheet to avoid typical errors on that side. So here you'll see we're going to run a sensitivity. Instead of giving them free entry, we're only allowing, allowing these options. Down here you'll see there's something called a dilution percentage. This should be between the range of 0 and 10%. If someone wants to type in, for example, 12% when they click enter, they get a warning saying, are you sure this is correct? It should normally be this range. Do you want to continue? So you should build in as many checks and controls that will improve the integrity of your model as possible. So you'll see in our models, inevitably we make use of spark lines to check the inputs and the outputs. Are they making sense? We generally have some sort of a check. Should it come to zero? And even your sensitivity analysis typically helps because if for some reason one of these items is throwing out a very strange number it may indicate some sort of error. So whatever you do build in as many error checks as you can think of and anything you do to check a model manually build it directly into the model.